Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Stranger Things 2, it's episode 2, chapter 2, <laughs> a lot of 2's here, yeah so it's chapter 2, trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> So close. Trick or treat, freak. Do you see what I did there? I combined the. I, I, the, I do. The, the two but, words. I mean, you held it together through all the twos, and then and when it get to actual words, just just failed. Yeah, yeah, I broke down. So trick or treat, freak is the is the title of the episode. Uh, see, it's funny because last episode I felt bad that I didn't say chapter one at the start, and now, now I'm almost wishing I didn't bother saying chapter two this time because <laughs> it just it's thrown me off on a tangent, but. Uh, here here we are, so full spoilers for the episode as always, and this is kind of what it says in the tin, this is the trick-or-treat episode, because it kind of builds up to them going trick-or-treating, and then they go trick-or-treating, and what happens, uh, so this is the Halloween episode, which is funny, because you know, we've been the whole season we've been thinking of is, oh, it's a Halloween event, but yeah. we've gotten to the Halloween stuff in episode 2, uh, I mean episode 3 could just continue Yeah, we're, we're a couple of days early, but you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, hey ho. I guess, I guess their thing is, in case some people take a few days to watch a couple of episodes, almost everyone will see the Halloween episodes before Halloween or on Halloween. I get it. I, I do remember, you know, they first announced that they said Halloween, and I still wonder if if it was this early on, maybe they did originally intend to release it on Halloween, because most people will probably have watched two on the first day. Yeah, most of the people are sated for it, certainly, yeah. 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 Uh, so, we got, obviously we ended with the, the reveal at the end of the last episode with Eleven. Uh, mm. You know, Hopper's taking care of her in a cabin in the woods, and well, this was kind of we got flashbacks to what sort of happened before this season. In fact, not even just before this season, before the very end of season one, because it was kind of yeah. Because obviously we had a bit of a time jump at the end of season one where it went to Christmas. This was kind of in between. Yeah, it was the aftermath, and then yeah. a little bit more. So it was like right after she'd like dealt with the demogorgon. And we see her in like the upside down version of the school, and she's like wondrous, very creepy, very Silent Hill esque, very very spooky. Really like that stuff. Yeah. And she sees like some some people, maybe police officers, through like a a wall portal wart thing. Hole, <laughs> hole. Yeah, but there's, there's like there's like matter and skin and stuff. She has yeah, to, like, a, a membrane. Yeah, a membrane. She has to go through it, and she she actually uses her telekinesis to like break the wall away, and she comes through. Uh, and we see she she basically lives on her own in the forest for a long time, like until until you get the because I think the impression at the time when we watched season one that 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 moment at the end where Hopper puts the, the waffles in the box, it was like he was leaving them knowing she'd come and get them. But now we've seen this like other side of it. I feel like he was actually just seeing if she was there. Yeah, perhaps. And then once he discovered she was there, that's when we got this new setup. But you know, it led to this. You know, we got a cabin looking after her. And where we are yeah. now. I, I do wonder if it was a bit of both. Like the first time it was like, okay, we'll see if she's there. Mm. And then it was like, okay, I'm going to leave food until 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 she's ready sort of thing. Yeah. And obviously the scene right after the, the opening stuff is that she goes to Mike's house and the, all, like there's all these agents there, FBI, CIA, whoever, whoever's dealing with all this crap. And they're interviewing the parents. And I, I, la I laughed how when they asked the dad to not tell anyone about this. He's like, oh, yes, sir. We're, we're all patriots top, top here. Top secret. We get it. Yeah, he gives a little salute as he does it, which I thought was amusing. Uh, but like, she sees Mike being grilled, and she's like, "Oh, do you know where she is? She's she's very dangerous. I know she told you all these things, but she's very dangerous." And he's like, "No, I don't. And even if I did, I would never tell you." I, I like that he's that honest. He's like, "I would never tell you anyway. Piss off." Yeah. Uh, but she, they're t saying all this stuff, and he even sees her through the window, uh, and they even catch him kind of looking and like, "What was he looking at?" And they they go oh, outside. I love the music at that moment. You know where they kind of see each other. Mm. The music there is just gorgeous. Yes, it's very, uh, and, I, and I mean this in, in the the actual sense of the word, not just that I like the music, but it was very beautiful. The little thing that yes, it was it was all about you know uh, the better street of like seeing the loved one through the window, and then yeah, it, yeah. it was it was great stuff. And you know we, we, she's out in the cold, and that's kind of that's why she never that, that explains why she doesn't just go back into town because she realised that she, the effect she's having on those she cares about around her, she's she's drawing all this attention and all these people. Yeah, and uh, she knows she's being hunted. And she's being hunted by the government. They they want her for yeah. research and whatever else, and all basically all the things she was already part of before she got yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, like that was the whole point of the escape. Exactly. Um, so 
so yeah, so 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 we have that. And her, her in this episode also, she's kind of adorable throughout the whole thing because she scares the shit out of Hopper. She's got like a a, a sheet over her head. Yeah. And she and she, I like how when she does it, she actually announces what she is. She's like ghost. I love how she talks in just you know one or two word sentences. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, yeah, you know. Like the, I think that like the longest is maybe three words. Yeah, because they have breakfast and she she wants to go trick or treat and her she's like, hey, I can, I, we can do this because I can dress up. No one will know it's me. Like I can hide out yeah. in public tonight. Uh, and he's like, no, it's too dangerous, you know, risks are stupid and we are not stupid. Like, that, that was like, that seems to be something they've they've exchanged before. You get this sense that that's like a, a thing that he's told her before. And, Definitely. Uh, so again, it builds some of the history we've got with these two characters. Like, they, they have kind of bonded over this time. There is a definite father figure kind of thing going here, right down to the fact that he's disappointing her by uh, showing up late when he promised, he promised it, he's, he compromises, and it's, a, it's like she, he's also teaching her words, because he teaches her the word compromise, she doesn't know what that means. Yeah, word of the day. Yeah, and I like how he does it, it's, like, it's com, promise, died. <laughs> you know, like, it's like the word promise is in there. Uh, but yeah, because she wants to go to her treat, and he's like, no, nah, we'll watch some scary movies, I'll bring home lots of candy, and we'll get fat. Right, he's you know, mm. makes a genuine little offer, uh, and what I love about it is that she says five fifteen. Like we get the time, and we also know the time the party's going to be on, or when when uh, Jonathan's dropping off Will. So we know that because he's not went home yet, that this must be after the time. So we actually know before he even realizes he's already late. I think it's it was just you know, it was completely dark. Oh sure, I'm like, yeah. I'm like okay, yeah, it, it's it's you know it's October, it gets dark early, but. You're late, just immediately. Yeah. No, I mean, it is kind of obvious anyway, but I just kind of like that they actually set up, like, if you wanted to actually work it out exactly and know for a fact that he's late, you could do it. Yeah. They, they gave you times for different things to know that, oh, wait, if I've already seen that, then he must be late. Uh, and I like how panicked he gets over it. He kind of like, rushes to the, the, the truck and he's like, all right, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. And he tries and to, did like... And you just see him back up. Yeah, he's like, oh, wait, I, there's no stores open now. Uh um, any 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 candy because it's a small town, I, especially in the eighties. I don't imagine they've got any twenty four hour places Probably. open. Uh, it's more common now, obviously, even in small towns. But at the, t- at the time, I'm fairly certain that yeah, at least a late night convenience till like you know ten eleven. Yeah, um, so he he, <laughs> he barters with this kid for for candy so he can go home to her, and she doesn't let him in. She she's actually taking the TV into the into the room you see the cable and she won't let him in i like the idea though that because at first she doesn't let him into the actual building at all she didn't let him into the cabin and then door unlocks but you get the sense that she used her telekinesis because she's still in the room i like yeah, that it's a really great. simple little touch but it works i Which, think that she's a bit more powerful so she's not even looking she's not even she's because i know where the door is i'm just doing it yeah and we see that's how she she hunts with her telekinesis we see her like throw a squirrel against a, a tree to kill it and at first yeah. I was like, "That's a bit harsh way doing that." Oh, it's to eat. All right, fair enough. On, yeah, on and that own. was af- like that was such a an evil transition because you know you just had this squirrel come up on the the little feeder outside the window, and she's yeah. looking at it, and it's all nice, and then it cuts to her killing one. Well, I think that's the point. She felt bad about it because she's looking at yeah. the squirrel, and she she she's like, "Oh, I had to do some bad things to survive before before Hopper came along and fed me waffles." I like that she just still just eats waffles. Oh, she's all because remember it gives her shit for uh, eating the waffle last episode before. I know, the I know, but she doesn't care about any of the other stuff. It's still just waffles that she cares about. Waffles are pretty good. Yeah. Be good. Get some syrup on them. They're good. Don't, don't judge her. Don't, don't judge a living for eating waffles. I'm not judging a free waffle. I'm just just saying like the number of things. Not, how that, is she not bored of them? The number of things that we could judge you for and we don't. I know. I just I'd get bored of waffles after that long. Sure. So with that, yeah, there's literally no food on earth I couldn't get bored of after a while. Right, exactly. And she's been eating them for like a year. No, she's been eating some squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but how long was she having squirrel for until he started dropping off the waffles? I don't know, a month, a couple of months. I don't know. Something That's true. Like that. It's it's, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, we don't really know. We we know it was still winter, but I mean that could be like you know going into March almost, depending on yeah, it could, it how could. cold it still is. So. Uh, but yeah, oh, which by the way, she's watching TV and the Terminator TV spot comes on. Yeah. They're building to it. They are. I feel like they're, because they've got the name in the first one, then we've got the TV spot here. I actually feel like we're building to some sort of big reference. Like it's I, gonna, I think they are, yeah. It's going to be relevant at some point. Um, 
Like they're going to go and hide in the theater at one point, and they'll be playing, and they're going to like get an idea from the movie. Or maybe yes. they'll get an idea. Maybe they'll be like, we, well, we can we can get the monster to go through a factory, and we can. Uh, I, I assume it's supposed to be telling us, you know, this monster that we're seeing is supposed to be, you know, it's a Terminator, it's an unstoppable, unstoppable, force. yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, because I think it would be easy to write off some of the references because there's, there's a few more of them this year than was last year. I think it'd be easy to write them off and say, oh, they're just pandering to you know the nostalgia mm-hmm. fans who want all these references. But yeah, I think look at it. Like, what what could Terminator specifically? They're, they're, and you know, the scene that you see in the TV spot is him going through the station and like just killing people, you know, yeah. nonstop. So I, you know, I wonder if there is something there to that. I think it, once is an Easter egg. You know, it's just a reference. But yeah. Twice in two episodes. That's that's got a purpose. Yeah, absolutely. That's fair. Uh, so we'll jump over to Hopper and what he was doing, just since we saw already covered some of his stuff. Uh, another farmer, a pumpkin farmer specifically. It, it baffles my mind that there's two pumpkin farmers in one small town. Like, what do you... What do you it reminds me... Uh, Tis the season. I, I had a friend... Uh, yeah, I suppose that's true. They might just be growing them for this time of year because they're, they're popular. That's, that's, yeah. that's fairly true. But it reminds me, I had a friend in uh, college who who lived in a very, very small town. Like, population, like, a thousand people or something like that. You know, very small. And, you know, I, I went there once, and one, one of the things that I noticed that was I thought was very amusing is that their, their, their fire station only had one, like, you know, w- w- one, like, door for an engine or a truck to come out of. There was just one on its right. own. It was that small. That was how small the fire station was. But we were walking through like, the main part of the, the little town, the little village, and there was two chiropractors. And I thought... <laughs> Why is there two like you have you have one fire truck for the entire town, but you need two chiropractors? More people have back problems than they do have fires. I mean, that may be true. I mean, it must be true in that town. Uh, Otherwise, how how on earth are two chiropractors staying in business? It's not just for fires, though. I mean, you, you, you no, get, I know, no, no. You, do a lot of other things, but hey, I'm being facetious. Just anyway, come on, go with it. So he's convinced that it was the other farmer from the last episode who's, you know, revenge. Like, oh, he thinks I did it to him, so now I've, he's done it to me. Um, but then they find out that every single farmer, like around the town, like I assume this is the sort of small town where all the outskirts are all farms, kind of idea. Yeah. And it seems like every single one, like you know, the one that we had last episode was the start of it, but something is rotting and killing the crops in all of them. And they're out there investigating. The other deputies are out there at other farms investigating. And there's like this goo over everything. And he's like putting markers down. And I'm like, yeah, this is a sign that big bastard's coming. That that, that big monster. He's like prepping the the ground for his arrival. That's what's happening here. Pretty much. Uh, it, or if not prepping, it's just a sign. You know, just like, you know, it's, it's, it's a side a, effect. It's a, yeah, it's a byproduct of, yeah. of whatever he's doing to come. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that makes sense. Um so yeah, that's what that's what he's up to. That's why he ends up being late because he's he's out marking these kind of things all day. Mm. I mean, it's an inefficient process, but got to be done, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's get to the kids because I think we want to talk about Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, we probably do. Because we, we we start with them and we get this little montage of all four kids getting their photos taken before they go to school because their parents are all so proud that they're in Ghostbusters uniforms. Uh, Lucas's little sister was cracking me up. Call yep, him a nerd. That, that was that was that was cracking me up. <laughs> um, Dustin being so proud, having the trap, also cracking me up. Yeah. Although the funniest thing with the trap comes later, admittedly, but it was it was cracking me up at this point. And <laughs> obviously, Mike, you know, and he's and he's bad place. He's very sad. He's just like, Mom, just piss off with the camera, please. Let me let me go to school. Uh, but they, they get to school, and we have. Well, maybe one of the most cringiest conversations, like just in the sense that you knew where this conversation was going when it started. So yep. they, they all show up and, oh, I should mention, actually, uh, Joyce was terrified that Will had disappeared when he was in the bathroom before he left for school. Just Yeah, yeah. This is going to get tedious. Do you think? I don't mean that about way. I mean, I, I, mean right. I know they have to do it because, yeah, of course, she's like this. But I can see myself getting bored of her being like this. If it's just, if unless it you know like ch- shifts dramatically, if it's just o- over and over her being scared for a long time, yeah. I mean, as long as they don't do, I mean, this was the only fake out we've had with that. So as long as they don't keep doing fake outs, I think I'm okay with it. No, oh, fair enough. You know, if they, if they do this multiple times where she's like panicking and searching and finds them okay, like 
Yeah, yeah, just I think just her worrying so much. I think I, I get that she has to, but I don't think I need to see it quite this much as I am. Mm. Yeah, well, we'll see how they tackle it. But yeah, uh, so they all show up, and it was funny actually. At first, I assumed they maybe had their own names on their on their tags, and oh, then you see them like, okay, oh hey Vinkman, hey hey Spengler, and so on, and. There's two Venkmans, and Lucas is one of the Venkmans, and Mike's the other Venkman. And he's like, wait, I'm not, I'm Venkman, you're not Venkman, you're supposed to be Winston. And I'm like, oh god. And Joe, you know what I loved about this scene is that the entire time you could see Dustin in the background looking like, mm, don't go here, don't go here. He's oh, like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't we want all Mike... know where this is going. Yeah, Mike, he doesn't want Mike to go down this path. He knows where this is going, and he's like, no, don't do this. Um, <laughs> he's like, well, well, I want to be Venkman. No, I'm Venkman. Why can't you be Winston if you think Winston's so cool? He's like, well, cause, cause, well, because you're not black, right? And you're just you're waiting for it. He's like, I never said that. Yeah, but you were thinking it. Um, and you, and you know what? He probably was thinking it. I feel like he was thinking it. <laughs> I mean, everyone was thinking. Like we were all thinking, okay, this is where it's going. So yeah. we're, you know, so we're if we're aware enough to think that, he's aware enough to be thinking it. Exactly, and I mean, obviously, the main kind of goes there because it's you know it's a group of four boys. Three of them are white, one is black. Ghostbusters. Three of them are white, one is black. You get why your mind just kind of jumps there. It just it kind of fits. But I get why Lucas doesn't want to be Winston. I actually do. I completely get why he doesn't want to just be him because automatically he's supposed to be. Whereas the other three get to pick, you know, which yeah. one they connect with more. Um. So no, but of course, I love that this moment in the trailer. Right, all the trailers we got, we had this moment where uh, Dustin kind of like looks Turns around. around, he looks terrified. Yeah, as if there's a monster coming. And then the actual payoff to that is, uh, guys, why is no one else dressed up? And what, what, a, two things I love about it is one, it's just really funny, right? Because then we get the shots of them walking down the hall and everyone's like shouting, you know, nerds at them and everything else. Mm. And two, I love it because once, well, like we said last episode. This is something that was in all the trailers, and we've done it in episode two. A, it wasn't yes. even what we thought it was, and B, it's done. Like, I feel like we've seen almost nothing from the rest of the episodes now. Uh, there can't be much, just based on how much we did see and how much we've seen so far. Yeah, like, the Ghostbusters uniforms, the big monster in the sky. I feel like all the things I remember from the trailers, we've already kind of seen, for the most part. Like, all, the, sure. all the big moments, at least. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I like that. I like that they, they, they kind of picked their, their but even like i remember a shot of steve dancing in his sunglasses in the trailer and that again that's in this one mm. yeah they're very, very smart with the the marketing department on that one yeah yeah so i, I think i think that's cool um so dustin and lucas are still they, they spot max over over by the locker and they're like oh should we go and ask her go talk to her and they they kind of wait too long and she already walks off which was actually great because she shuts the locker and the music just stops because yeah. they're building up to it, and then it's like, nope. You know, not now. Yep, yeah, not happening. But they come to her later, and they very, very awkwardly ask her to come trick-or-treating. Although they phrase it in such a way, as she it's... points out, that she should be honoured to join them for trick-or-treating. Yeah. We decided it'd be okay if you came with this trick-or-treating. <laughs> yeah, they're so awful at this. This is the only way I'd put it. They are awful. They should be awful at it, though. They're, they're like they 12. should be, yeah. yeah. Uh, and she, she actually refers to them as stalkers. She's like, no, we were, stalk- we were protecting you from bullies. There's lots of bullies around here. Yeah, just look around. Here. Uh, my favourite part, though, is Dustin being so proud of his uh, of his trap. You know, the, the ghost trap. He's like, oh, these aren't functional, but yeah, this thing, look at this. And he goes, wow. Like, I do love uh, that. But nothing tops the moment where, where she calls him presumptuous, and he just goes, "Oh, yeah, yeah." Definitely. <laughs> and then she walks away, and he's like, "Presumptuous? That's good, right?" <laughs> <laughs> Lucas is like, "You dick." <laughs> you know what? He's right that Dustin is a bit of a dick in this scene, but Lucas can't say much because he stayed quiet the entire time. After the initial <laughs> bully thing, he just went quiet and let Dustin keep talking and talking about his trap and everything. He was else. like, he was like, dude, you're digging a deeper hole. Just stop. Yeah, jump in and save him. You know, be the wingman. <laughs> yeah. Or take the spotlight, whatever one. But just you can't say shit if you stay quiet all the time. All right. <laughs> uh dear. Nah. No, uh, kids are great. Obviously, they go trick or treating. Will's kind of, you know, he's kind of pissed that he has to have a chaperone. He doesn't, he doesn't want Jonathan to come with him. So Jonathan 
and I was like, oh, this might lead to something bad. And it doesn't seem to have led to anything too bad because, he, but you know, by the end of this, he's back at Mike's house, which was, which was where he was supposed to be to get picked up. So it seems like nothing bad came of it. But Jonathan actually gives him his space and he says, okay, fine, I'll be back at nine. Don't leave the neighborhood. Although, giving him Bob's camera, the, you know, Bob ch- cherishes so much. He really does. Bob loves too that much. camera. Yeah. Um, maybe it was a bad idea. That was maybe a bad idea. Uh, so they're trick or treating, and the best moment of the show so far happened. Oh God, I, I know exactly what you're going to bloody say, and it's not the best moment of the show. It's just only to you is it the best moment of the show. First of all, I mean, no one would have predicted that the ginger would be my favourite character going into this, but she is now. Max, She's kind of mine too, to be honest. Max has become the the best of the best because Max's Halloween costume is the shape. Which more commonly is referred to as Michael Myers for anyone who doesn't know what that means. Um, and she jumps out with a knife, a fake knife presumably, and scares the shit out of them. And uh, it's like, hey, I got you guys good. Come on, let's go get the rich, rich <laughs> houses. You scream like a bitch. <laughs> that was basically what she said. I mean, it was a little girl, but same difference. Yeah. Uh, although that said, she does kind of feel bad because her brother almost run, ran them down earlier on. Because her brother yeah. is a complete Proving dickhead. again, he is a dick. He is a complete dickhead. And Matt pointed out to us earlier where we know this guy's face from. He is the Red Power Ranger from the new Power Rangers movie. Which is amazing because I was going, okay, I know this when I'm watching it. And I'm like, I still can't see it properly. Like, I'm really having to stare to see it. It's the fact that he's he's got that douchey look in his face the whole time. And then there's the mullet. The mullet just, yeah. you know, doesn't matter how, how well you think you know someone looks like. People with mullets all look the same. Yeah. What he's saying here is a, a haircut makes someone look unrecognisable. <laughs> no, don't reference that. You can't reference something from a comics podcast that most people watching this video won't get. Right? I know it's funny to you, but you can do it. Look, it worked fine on its own. <laughs> it was just way funnier for me. Right, uh, so, so yeah, so she feels bad about that. So she actually makes a point to integrate ourselves with them although it leaves mike kind of pissed like mike's like oh what's this girl yeah, doing it, here it actually was uh, a funny moment because to me at least you know that the whole thing where dustin and luke's went up to her was like hey yeah we, we 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 have a democracy and we're like yeah we all said you can come along um mike's mm. like i never said she could come along like that was the whole thing it was like no it was like i, I don't want to hear oh but will did though because that's, that's the thing will says he's like oh it's just for halloween and they, yeah you know uh and so up to the of the doctor. I mean, he never, Mike never even knew about it. But no, the, no, I mean, it is. It's, yeah. it's great. But but Dustin says we all said we, you can come along. That's true. That is true. What made me laugh about it though is that he's the one who had the crush on Eleven last season, and he wanted her to be everywhere, and the others didn't. So I thought that was kind of a funny flip of the tables. Yeah, it to, is compared to last season. And uh, I'm also, I'm glad that he's not like liking Max too much as well. I feel like I might still do that. Where he beco- he gets into her and then Mike? Eleven shows up. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think he will. I think he hates Max, so I think eventually we'll have that turning point where he respects her and they become friends. But I don't think they're going to do the crush. I feel like I'm, I'm glad because I think that was my concern was that yeah. he'd, he'd, you know they do almost like a love triangle thing here. Well, they've got a love triangle thing. They've got they've got Max, Lucas, and Dustin. Right, right, but that's not the one I was. Ref- that one's funny. Yeah, that one is funny. No, I'm happy that for them to stick to that. That that one's funny. The one I was afraid of was Mike, Max, and Eleven. And she's going to pick Will. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Uh, by the way, just on the Michael Myers thing, not not to go back to it, just that there was also a Jason Voorhees, which I, th- I think is worth mentioning. Just briefly. What, yes, it's what, incredibly worth mentioning. At one point, there's a bunch of kids that jump out of Will, and one of them is Jason Voorhees. Come on, look. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it up. I love these characters. You know I do. Or mention it and it's set in 1984 which is funny because it means jason got the hockey mask in the third movie which was before this and then it, the fourth movie came out in 84 i don't know if it was out by halloween or you would you would think it would be though if they were smart it was around halloween yeah it may have been earlier cause sometimes they put them out in the summer but yeah. yeah um that said with friday the 13th arguably whatever the friday the 13th is in the year is where you put it out assuming you have a friday the 13th that year there's always at least one is there? There's always at least one, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Sometimes there's two. Like, very rarely there's, there's three, but always one. I'll tell you one. 
I'm fairly certain. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, he freaks out and he has a vision. He has, uh, you know, Mike's complaining about Max being there. She's ruining the best night of the year. He's been a, he's been a little bitch, let's be honest. But, is, yeah. um, you get why he's bummed. You feel bad for him. You know what he's missing a living. Um, and what's great is so mate, mate, uh, uh, Will freaks out and he sees more stuff. He sees the big monster coming from. Looks really cool. Oh, I was loving. All I this. think uh, you know I was really glad about the shot that we got in the trailer was the one from last episode because mm. I think this was a way cooler moment. And I'm oh. glad that this one wasn't spoiled. Oh, it was yeah because it actually starts moving towards him. It's just... it's the way it stands up almost and forms. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and he ends up hiding, and of course, he snaps out of it when when Mike comes up and kind of shakes him out of it. But I do like as much as Mike seems like he's been a bit of a dick because he's in a bad mood right now. When it comes to Will, he actually drops that and seems to be a very concerned friend. Like he actually really cares about about Will. I, I wouldn't say he drops it entirely because obviously, you know, he's like, "I'll take him," and he's like, "I'm bored of this anyway." He's, oh yeah, he's but, still kind of pissed off at them. I, I mean, when he's talking to Will, though, like, his tone with Will right. is always yeah, yeah. like, you know. Uh, encouraging and friendly and concerned and whatever and they go back to his and Mike tr- uh, Wills tries to explain to Mike like how it feels and you know all these times that he's zoning out and going to this other place and uh, how he feels like he's between here and the upside down and uh, and you know and Mike's like oh I love him I'd understand she was great yeah well she was here <laughs> yeah. uh, which obviously one of the final moments of the episode just to sort of tie this to the Eleven stuff is that Eleven when she's watching TV she blindfolds herself and goes into her sort of psychic kind of I like she can do it with just a blindfold now yeah yeah because she used to have to go into a, a full tank and some she's been practicing she used to, yeah she used to have to have the full sensory deprivation that was the whole yeah. you know end point of last season now it's just visual basically yeah um but yeah, she 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 finds him like in his little fort with the and you know what's pre- you know what's because I was thinking maybe it was this this last episode until it yeah got closer. I, I did as well and then yeah. you see he's in the the Ghostbusters in yeah. the outfit still and you realise it's live and you're like oh cool um, mm. and uh, like he just he doesn't hear her like she's trying to call out to him and he doesn't quite get it but you get the sense that maybe that 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 one time she he heard his name last episode was maybe her it was maybe this this was what happened if she yeah. came and said it like this. Uh, which is which is pretty cool. So, uh, they're, they're building to that stuff. So let's get back to uh, as Batman would say, justice uh, for Barb in this case. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Was that too too much of a cringy intro to that? That it, it was pretty awful. I'm I'm so sorry. Never I'll, do that again. I apologize for everyone. I do like going justice though. No, You're the worst. <laughs> so she, Nancy has a moment in the library where she thinks she sees like what looks like Barb from behind, and she has told you her look wasn't unique. Did I argue with that? So it was. You did, yeah, because this this was when we were having the discussion last episode where you said it was the Boba Fett effect, and I said at least Boba Fett looks cool and unique, and you said so does Barb. <laughs> Well, I was clearly not being that serious with that statement. Well, yeah, I know. But you argued for a good 30 seconds. I just... It's the, it's the Boba, Fett, Boba Fett effect in the sense that she's a small character that the fandom of, for some reason have clinged on to and want more of, and are like, blah, 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 barb this and blah, 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 barb that. I got yeah. I just, I just wanted to, you know, okay, take a Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, but it's the same haircut, so that's what makes it important. You can tell it's meant to be barb. So... Okay. So she thinks she sees Barb, and she's like, "I actually wanted to see the pencil she was sharpening because that's what she's doing. She's up sharpening her pencil, and I wanted to see that the pencil was like tiny now <laughs> because she was standing there sharpening it for ages." You know, I can't remember the last time I saw one of those crank sharpeners. Uh, probably when I was in school when I was young, when I used pencils yeah. on a regular basis. I use pencils on a regular basis at work, but ah, but it's not like a. I don't have a crank sharpener. You're not in a classroom where you're constantly having to do it, kind of thing. No. It's a different environment, yeah. Um, but aye, so she, she sees this, she freaks out a little bit, and she says to Steve, like, they go in a private room in the library, and she's like, hey, I'm freaking out, we have to tell our parents something, I can't do this, I can't go... And this is the thing, as much as we were, we're joking about them bringing the Barb stuff back, I do actually like what they're doing with it for Nancy's character. It's, it's giving her something to get through and push... Because thinking back to season one, she didn't really get a whole lot of time to process the Barb stuff. Like, she sort of found out and she was shocked, but she had to sort of help save the world, or save the town, or whatever. And n- now she's really getting to go through it. So I actually do like it from her character's perspective. It's just it's just funny, because we keep joking about it. No, the... I, I agree. I li- again, it's one of these, I like it 
to a point. It's another one where I feel like it has to has to develop and really go somewhere so I don't get bored of it. Well, we're only two episodes in, I think. It's no, 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 I mean, it's, it's not a complaint yet. It's just that, like, it's one of those where I don't know what they're going to do with it. So I'm, you know, well, I I'm, have I'm cautious. Good authority. The episode three is where the plot really kicks in. So I wonder if, like, we're getting all this... Because we mentioned how the first episode kind of feel like this. I think, to an extent, the first two as a pair kind of feel like this now. Yeah. Where it's a lot of, like, here's where the characters are. Here's set these things up. Set up their... their the start of the arcs that they're going to experience throughout the episode, throughout the season, yeah. and uh, like uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think once there's actual more plot and threat going, because the first two episodes really don't have a lot of threat for most of the characters yet. Like we don't have a monster, no, we don't have not, someone who's missing. Plot. You know, we're, we're teasing a couple of little things. There's but, a yeah, compared to the first, there's a real lack of urgency so far. But I, as I understand yeah. it, three's where it kicks in, cause, and I, I just know that from comments. One of our regulars mentioned that three's where it. It kicks in, so they took two episodes to set us into the world, and uh, no, that's fine. Like, so, I, I think I said last time one yeah. or two at tops. If you, when you get in three or more, I'm, I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wasn't first this episode. I was too busy having fun with Michael Myers and Halloween and. Gosh, you were. Everything also, else. I forgot to mention. You know when um the the mad Max's dick brother is is chasing them down in the car. Yeah. And then he goes past them, and they go, "Oh, Mad Max." <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was clever when it was the car thing. Well, that's, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. Turns out he's a complete dick as well, because when uh, Jonathan goes to the party, he's, he's there, like, um, just getting drunk and thinking he's a badass. Uh, like I say, that's how and, you do and, it. And he's a, a dick to Max as well. And she's like, yeah, this is all yeah. your fault. Whatever, whatever's gone on. Yeah, they're, they're stuck in this town, and she, she like, says it's his fault, and he becomes a complete dick, and... That's when he starts speeding and he threatens to hit the kids. Oh, these are your friends. Oh, I'm going to hit them. She has to grab the wheel and pull it away. This guy's not fit to be looking after his little sister. I mean, this guy's th- not fit to be alive. <laughs> Tell her not to have a driving license. I feel like that should be revoked. No, definitely not. No. For, first and foremost, that should be what goes. Um, so we're on, the, we're on the Nancy stuff. And Nancy, Steve's like, let's just go to this stupid party. Let's just be dumb teenagers. Uh, although he regrets that he said that because Nancy just immediately starts to get drunk and gets absolutely plastered. She uh, does. And some things come up when she's completely drunk. Uh, when Steve's trying to like, calm her down in the bathroom after he's spilt drink all over, her, all over her dress or her costume. And it basically comes up that she doesn't love him. And every time he asks, like, you don't love me? or every, every, Basically everything he asks, she's just like, bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Uh, like that could have been the title of this episode. Oh, bullshit, bullshit, yeah, bullshit. Yeah, it's just the amount of time she says it. <laughs> uh, it. I mean, as much as I said, like obviously Steve's been redeemed a bit in season one and he's not the, the complete dick that he was early on. I, I'm still more invested in her ending up with Jonathan. They still have more chemistry. There's, yeah. there's a better vibes going there. So obviously Jonathan sees Steve's arm out and he he takes her home and you know takes her shoes off tucks her into bed um you know so again we're just we're setting up where the characters yeah. are I, I'm I'm with Jonathan that I don't like parties either but I, mean, I might like I, I like that I think I might have liked them more in the 80s when they had better music because yeah. you know we had we had Motley Crue Motley Crue we had Duran Duran what's Motley Crue is that like some weird I, version? I just no I just lost the ability to speak for a moment is that like some sort of weird demented version of Clue slash Cluedo where you're like it's like a baker gang trying to solve a murder. Oh, I wish. That sounds way more fun. <laughs> oh. Um So yeah, so 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 yeah, so Nancy's feeling it is basically the point, which uh you know, I, I mean you could argue that that was maybe set up enough in the first episode, but I think seeing her actually like this is how broken she is about it, like she's actually like oh you know, and, and putting herself in a position where she's maybe in harm's way. Yeah, I mean, I, I still don't think it was a, as effective as the breaking down crying in the bathroom in the first episode. I, I agree. That, 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 I think that, that did the point better. That that felt... But that hit a little bit harder. We felt really bad for her. Here you still feel bad for her, but she's being kind of almost uh, like uh, confrontational with it. And that's like harder to get behind. Like Because when someone's sad, you feel, oh, that's bad, they're sad. When they're being this way, it's kind of like, okay, I get why you're being this, I feel bad for you, but you are acting out of line. You know, it's like... Yeah, she's very self-destructive right now. Yeah. Which, I mean, I get that that's the point of showing us this, but like I said, I think it just the, 
the overall point of how this is affecting it hit harder for me within the scene last episode. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fair. Uh, so elsewhere, we had we had uh, Joyce and uh, Bob. Bob tries to ask her to move out of the town, move, move out of Hawkins and go elsewhere to get away from the memories. Yeah. Which she poo-poos, but do we think that this will end up happening by the end of the season? No. That, she, that they've seen it, so she might actually decide to do that at the end of the season? No, I don't, I don't see it, personally. Maybe that's, I could be completely wrong. I just don't see it. That's fair. Uh, I, I kind of can see it. Uh, it may be the reason why everyone's back is they're visiting, like, next time there's a season. You know, season three. Yeah, maybe. It could maybe, be. Maybe that's what's I, I, I like that he said, you know, the, the, the place it was going to go to was Maine. And just because, you know, that's the, the Stephen King town. Yeah, that's true. And it f- yeah. feels, this feels very Stephen King. Uh, uh, that's true. That's a nice touch. So, so yeah, we have, we have that scene. And that's basically all it is. Uh, I do think they're seeding that for a reason, though. I think she at least will be tempted to take that offer. Uh, maybe, yeah. like, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe Bob will die this season, and that's how that will be wrapped up, and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, the funny thing is, though, is that I wouldn't even mind losing Will or, or Joyce, even really. Like, she's fine, but she, she's like connected to Will. Uh, Jonathan would be the biggest loss out of losing the the Byers family. Right now, I agree. But I think Will might have a really good arc over this yeah, season. Right, right. Where yeah. by the end I will disagree. Just, just with his place right now, where oh. he is, I feel like he's going to have a and and by nature of him not having an arc really last season because he was missing, he has the most to. He has the most to gain in this yeah. season. Where by the end I'll go. No, I want him to stay. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. But I think that's why I don't mind losing him is because yeah. he wasn't really in the show last year. It was the yeah, other yeah. three kids. Yeah, right now we yeah. don't really care about him as much. Yeah. Um, so that's that uh, we see a little bit more of the scientists uh, Paul Reiser I should use his character name Dr. Owens he he is uh, he's re-watching the tapes with Will he's studying them very closely he's got his stress ball he's always got the stress ball uh, but the main thing here is that they are getting into the upside down and they have like a uh, basically like a, a device that's recording data over there yeah. and they're trying to get it back up and running which they successfully do seemingly uh, and it's giving them readings of some kind, whatever whatever that may be. Yeah, I'm but, not entirely sure what they're doing yet. Yeah, I'm sure, obviously, this is just teasing things for later, but... Uh, yeah, capping it for more experiments on kids, I'm sure. Yeah, probably. Uh, so we have that, and then, of course, the final thing we should talk about is the ending, where, once again, Dustin, he looks into his, his trash, because he hears a noise, and he almost swears, and the Ghostbusters theme song kicks in again, and we go to credits. So it's a great moment. We don't get to see what it is. He's not that scared though. When he sees what it is, he's more impressed than he is scared. He's, he's I think. surprised. Yeah, but but not terrified. Yeah. So because he's because he's he's terrified building up to it. Of course. Yeah. But then he doesn't back away. He doesn't jump in. He doesn't you know do anything. He just kind of stops and looks, which says it can't be terrifying. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know if this is the big thing that's going to advance the plot, or if this is going to be. Something smaller than yeah. that, but we'll, we'll see what was in his trash next episode, I guess. Yes, we will. But no, uh, so that's episode two. So still, it's, it's still uh, this was more like episode one. Uh, you know, the, yeah. the plot's not really kicked into gear yet. Uh, but like we say, we've, we've heard that episode three does, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with two like this, to be honest. Oh, no, me too. And another, tra- another little thing I really enjoyed is, mm. uh, you know, when Hopper contacts Eleven, you know, on the, the, the radio. Ah, uh, yeah, and it's uh, oh, and more channel eleven. Oh, is it channel? I didn't even notice that. Yeah, channel yeah, that was the channel they were on. Yeah, I I do wonder if that's the one that Mike's on. So you know they keep going, "Why are you on this channel?" Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I wonder if he's on eleven as well, trying to catch this going. If if she's out there, she'll be on that one. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, that's that's a pretty cool touch. Do you know what I hope happens? I hope so. Things are going down later in the season. Big monsters coming. I want that moment, you know, kind of like how in Avengers, like you know, Mark, Mark Ruffalo, you know, Bruce Banner turns around, he's going to take care of this as Hulk. Yeah. I want Eleven to like stay back, turn around, put on a pair of sunglasses, and say, "This one goes to Eleven, and then do something badass." Oh, that would be amazing <laughs> if if she had a stronger comprehension of language and would understand the references to to say that. To to be fair, I don't think this is Spinal Tap exists yet, so. They can't that's actually make that reference. 
I don't no, think. That's a fair point. I'm going to double check because I, I got a mistake. I had a mistake in the last episode. Actually, I said that Mad Max Three was in the nineties. It was not. It was in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just you don't, just shit. Don't you say yeah like you knew that was wrong? I haven't seen the third one, so I don't care. I saw, I saw one, two, and four. <laughs> I, I didn't bother with three. I, I've actually never seen three either. I, I do intend on doing it at some point, though. Next time there's a Mad Max movie, we'll be we can work through the. Uh... <laughs> like there's going to be another Mad Max movie. Yeah, there might be. They might do one. Oh no! That's the Spinal Tap. Was released in 1984. It would be a fresh reference. Oh, oh, okay. All the more reason for them to do it. Yeah. When did it, when did it come out? Let me let me check the the, the time of yeah, year yeah, just that, to make that's sure. That's the real important part. Oh, March. Yeah, that's a, that's oh, was old. We're sound. Oh, great. Well, okay. So I want <laughs> I want <laughs> Eleven to say this one goes to Eleven before she does something badass. Or, or, someone, or someone else can say it. Actually, you know what? See, if Dustin jumps in and says, just before, like, he knows she's about to do something, he just steps in, like, to impress Max, this one goes to 11, and he just yeah. steps back out. I, I do think work. that moment will be, she's going to show Max up. Because obviously mm. Max is kind of coming across as, you know, she's the hard one. She's going to be, you know, the, the one leading the front at the she, moment. Yeah, she's a bit of a badass. She's very headstrong. And she seems to be confident with herself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think she's going to be there, and then, and then 11 will have to step in and go, you know, I've got this. Hmm. I'm not saying it. <laughs> this one goes to eleven. I, I just I want it. I want it so bad. I've never even seen that movie, but I want this reference. <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty great. Uh, that is episode two of Stranger Things season two. You can let us know what you think of the episode in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzzTV. You can do that over there. Get some bonuses and stuff. Uh, we are trying to keep these daily, so there should be one by the end of Sunday, which is tomorrow. Um, Good job you said that. I was trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> so should be one by then. Um, sometime after the uh, the DC uh, TV podcast goes up, where we do all the TV show, uh, DC shows from the week. Um, but yeah, so thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV. Stay out of the upside down. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>